Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. Here are the top 10 terrifying lighthouse keeper stories. Yep, didn't know they existed. Let's do it. Kicking off the list at number 10, Battery Point Lighthouse. You can reach this lighthouse by foot during low tide, but if you don't make that commute back before the water rises back up, well, you might have to stay the night, my friends. Battery Point Lighthouse was built in 1856 and it stood proud until its demolition in 1965. Of course, being that old, residents of Crescent City in California believe that it's haunted. These sightings have been so similar that it appears to be haunted by three ghosts two adults and one younger one. During tours, visitors have felt hands touch their shoulders like cold ghost hands, but nobody's behind them. One of the most famous encounters was hearing footsteps, like loud footsteps coming up and down the stairwell behind them. That's more frightening than the ghost hand, if I'm being honest. I don't like when people are behind me going upstairs. Number nine, Point Lookout Lighthouse. Built back in 1830, the Point Lookout Lighthouse in Maryland is one of the most haunted lighthouses of them all. This is, this is big, this is scary. This one has been talked about for many, many years. Now, it wasn't decommissioned until 1981, which is pretty recently. It's seen many, many nights and of course, many more visitors. After its decommission is when the ghost stories really began to rise up, funny enough. Dr. Hans Holzer and a team of experts investigated Point Lookout Lighthouse and managed to record 24 different voices during their visit. They had all that gear, they listened to voices, they found 24 voices. Even more haunting, the voices are apparently singing, some are talking, and some of them are cursing. Yeah, cursing, almost as if they're angry. That's, that's not a good sign, we don't want those. One voice was clear enough to make out a sentence. A ghost voice said, fire if they get too close to you. So perhaps they were the long lost voices of prisoners at one point, who knows? up for interpretation. One voice was believed to be that of Ann Davis. She referred to the staircase as her home in this recording. Of course, there too have been many sightings of one Ann Davis rocking the, of course, the ghostly apparel. Some sort of a white top. There's an apparition of a woman in white clothing. That's terrifying. Again, the classic white top. All these ghosts have a similar look. Along with the sight of ghosts, the smell of them also fills the air. Dr. Holzer believes this is the smell of all the souls who couldn't leave the lighthouse. That's always a common theme, a foul smell whenever a ghost is near. Number eight, Talaker Lighthouse. This UK lighthouse has been out of service since the 1840s, but visitors would often report feeling sick when they were done visiting. They would feel ill, they would get sick, that's so scary. That's the unique part of this haunted lighthouse. Back in the 1800s, the lighthouse keeper passed away from a fever. So now this ghost is just infecting all with tonsillitis. Not even a bit, everyone gets tonsillitis when they visit here. I don't know what's going on, this is crazy. One visitor recalls seeing a lighthouse keeper in old timey clothes, although there's no possible way there could have been anybody inside, you know, seeing as it was locked down a very long time ago. There was one family that visited and four out of the five members all got sick with, you guessed it, tonsillitis. I mean, could be a ghost, but either way, let's just wash our hands after we visit a dirty lighthouse. Number seven, Owl's Head Lighthouse. Located in Maine, the Owl Head Lighthouse was actually approved by President John Quincy Adams back in the 1820s. There's some wild history behind the lighthouse as well, more than just that. In 1850, a couple was brought back to life after pretty much being frozen. There's also a Maine ghost that haunts the ground now, and it's known as the Little Lady. Yeah, she sounds sweet. Her tricks include making doors rattle and silverware move on its own. And as recent as the 1980s, a new keeper had moved in with his family and his two-year-old daughter apparently saw an older bearded fella. She started talking about fog rolling in so her family thinks that she may have befriended a ghost. The ghost of a lighthouse keeper. How great is that? The sixth sense, but make it a lighthouse. Number six. Tevenek Lighthouse. This one looks like it's from a Lemony Snicket's book. This is crazy, how can this be real? Right off the coast of Brittany, the Tevenek Lighthouse just sits on a small island. Literally just this massive rock poking out of the water and then there's this Beetlejuice looking house neatly propped up on the top of it. How is this possible? Who built this? The lighthouse was built back in 1875, but nobody ever approached the island. It was always too rocky and almost always led to the currents smashing boats to pieces. Almost like it was a trap. Yeah, the rumored inhabitant of the island is Anku, AKA Death himself. So yeah, we got lighthouse keepers with bronchitis or the embodiment of death. Choose wisely, sailors. Number five, Solchoy Lighthouse. When it comes to the number of fatalities, Michigan's Solchoy Lighthouse is not playing games. Built in 1892, there have since been over a dozen shipwrecks with the number of deaths being somewhere in the high 500s. That's crazy. 
One of the early operators was a man named Joseph Willie Townsend. He was the keeper from 1902 to 1920. Visitors can still sometimes smell his favorite cigars, which is just what you want to smell when you're near the ocean. And again, silverware would move on its own. This seems to be a theme in the lighthouse afterworld game. One grim detail I had to share. Here we go. So it's a lighthouse, okay? It's beautiful. People watch the movie The Lighthouse, then they want to go and stay the night in an old-timey lighthouse. I get it. It's fun. I'm into it. Visitors often report indentations on their beds even when they weren't sleeping in it prior. Ugh, that gave me the... I got goosebumps. I don't like talking about that. Yep, old Willie apparently loved to nap in said lighthouse. And in the afterlife, there's always time for a quick 20 minutes minute power nap, apparently. Visitors believe that because the body of Willie was sitting for three weeks before being buried, perhaps his soul is stuck there in this lighthouse. Either way, rest up, my dude. Your watch has ended. Take a five, take a 20, take forever. Just chill. Number four, the new London Ledge Lighthouse. This one is the worst for me. I don't know why, but the isolation here is the scariest part of this entire scheme, operation, this whole thing. The new London Ledge Lighthouse was built on a man-made island. Yeah, this island was made in 1909. How creepy does it look? They just made a block and they called it an island. That's not an island, it looks nothing like an island. Yeah, private lunch on your own island, and then it cuts to you eating a bologna sandwich here. You're like, what? That's not what it said in the ad. This was needed back then to help control the traffic in and out of the Connecticut Harbor. Now it's home to a ghost named Ernie. Yeah, Ernie loves opening and closing doors all by himself. How neat is that? We love that. Prankster ghosts on a man-made island lighthouse. Sometimes people have noticed cleaner windows afterwards, so apparently he's a good spirit. Let's, let's bank that he stays that way. He's said to have passed away alone on the island sometime in the late 1930s, so rest in peace, Ernie. Number three, Paviglia Island, Italy. The small island of Paviglia has taken many, many lives. It's got a lot of dark history for this one. When the bubonic plague arrived, like the bubonic plague, in 1348, the island became a quarantine colony. That was its main purpose. So if you had symptoms, any symptom, you were sent to this island to, you know, yeah. It's a sad reality, but we didn't know any better. But then again, in 1630, the Black Death crept in, and once again, the center of this island became a mass graveyard really gross stuff. And then in the 1800s, the mentally ill residents were sent to this island as an asylum was then built. So it's like, when they didn't know what to do with anybody, they just sent them to this island. It's horrible. The rumor was that in the 1930s, this doctor, this crazy doctor, he would try crazy experiments on all these patients, and apparently he went crazy and jumped from the Bell Tower lighthouse. Now, although the tower doesn't stand anymore, his screams are still heard by locals. The soil is literally also 50% human remains at this point, so... The grounds are very cursed. Number two, Eileen Moore Lighthouse. What better island to visit than one with nobody on it, right? Again, private island, bologna sandwiches, all by yourself, we're good. In the early 1900s, a ship was heading to the Flannan Islands, completely uninhabited, and on the ship, we had Captain James Harvey and Joseph Moore. They were heading there to watch the lighthouse, but upon arrival, nobody greeted them. He blew his horn, waited, still nobody came down to meet them. The replacement lighthouse keeper rode to shore and started walking up the steep set of stairs towards the lighthouse, but when he got there, he realized the door was already unlocked and two out of the three coats were gone. And upon further investigation, he saw half-eaten food, a chair that had been tossed over, and the kitchen clock had stopped. Also, no sign of any of the previous keepers. When checking the lighthouse log, the previous days were odd. On December 12th, the second assistant, Thomas Marshall, he wrote down, severe winds, the likes of which I have never seen before in 20 years. And James was awfully quiet. And William, the third lad, he was crying the whole time. So yeah, something clearly happened. This book is full of sinister vibes. It's like the lighthouse in real life, honestly. That's a big no thanks for me. Never going to Eileen Moore. No thank you. And finally, number one, Point O Barks Lighthouse. There are plenty of lighthouses in Michigan, and apparently a lot of them are haunted. Didn't know about that. If you're in Michigan and you like lighthouses, sorry pal, I don't know how to tell you this. The Point Oak Barks Lighthouse was built in 1847, and as the legend goes, early to mid 1800s, Peter Shook had been Point O's first lighthouse keeper. Now in 1849, Peter sadly drowned while he and a couple of friends were sailing to Point Huron to pick up supplies for the lighthouse. So he left behind eight kids and his wife, Catherine. This is sad stuff. So Catherine then took over Peter's duties, thus becoming Michigan's first ever female lighthouse keeper. Pretty epic. Since then, people have claimed to see said spirit of Catherine walking along the edge of the cliff, dressed also in mourning clothes as she is still heartbroken by the loss of her lover. She's also been spotted in the window of the second floor wearing an apron. Along with an apparition being seen, footsteps ascending and descending the tower stairs and giggling had also been heard many times. Plus cold spots and foul smells. It's almost like 
ghosts have a specific thing they like to do. It's like, eh, hey, we're just gonna scare you, we're gonna wear old timey stuff, and we're gonna smell bad. Just so you know that we're scary. Additionally, during some investigations, the rocking chair specifically liked to move around, and of course, rock on its own. From some unexplained force. We like that. I've been your sailor for the evening, Taylor McWaters. Thanks for tuning in to some dark and ominous. Safe sailing, my friends. We'll see you next time. Peace.